Tracking and analyzing information from all over the world, meaning for spying. They call it the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, and it completely revolutionizes the art of the coup. Oh, and at this point, the US is now a full-blown global superpower, no longer just looking in their own neighborhood, but rather at the whole world map, investing huge resources into fighting their global rival and its communist ideology. So this gets us to Iran, 1953 where Iran had just elected a new star politician, Mohammad Mossadegh. He rises to power believing that Iran must take back control of its most valuable natural resource, oil, which at the time was completely controlled by a British company called the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. We know it today as BP. Mossadegh is done with this. Let's kick the British out and take back our oil. But like the US, Britain is not happy with Iranians trying to take back their resources. So they warn that if they do this, there will be consequences. So the British catch a quick meeting with the CIA's Middle East guy who was passing through London, and they pitch him on this idea. Let's throw out Mossadegh. The CIA's like, okay, and they kind of sniff communist vibes on Mossadegh with this big desire to nationalize Iran's oil, or at least they tell themselves they do. So the CIA agrees, and they secretly send this guy to Iran. He's the Middle East bureau chief, Kermit Roosevelt. He's like in his 30s. Oh, and yes, he is the grandson of another big coup guy, Teddy Roosevelt, who I have gone into in other videos. Roosevelt sneaks into Iran and is given a million taxpayer dollars to use, quote, in any way that would bring about the fall of Mossadegh. So now there's American CIA agents in Iran secretly trying to overthrow the government. And it's a rocky start at first with a bunch of failures, but they start using their money to get traction, bribing politicians, religious clerics, and other leaders to say divisive and controversial things about Mossadegh. They hire locals to stage attacks against religious leaders, making it look like they had been ordered to do so by Mossadegh. But really, they were just getting paid by the CIA to do this. And with enough time and money, they create an atmosphere of chaos and hostility and distrust among the public. Oh, and there's weapons. The CIA stashes enough weapons and explosives to support a, quote, 10,000-man guerrilla organization for six months, like, just in case they need to, like, start a full-on conflict. The result of all of this is more violence and chaos that engulfs the capital. Shops are being destroyed, bullets are flying into mosques, people are beaten, and thousands of paid demonstrators flood the street. The city falls into anarchy, all of it orchestrated by CIA money. And in the end, this all results in a bloody shootout at Mossadegh's house. He eventually gives up and turns himself in. He's put through a sham trial and found guilty of treason and sentenced to three years in solitary confinement and then house arrest, where he stayed until his death. The previous ruler of Iran, Mohammad Reza Shah, which just means king, had fled the country. But now with the democratically elected Mossadegh gone and with the backing of the US and UK, he could charter a flight back into Iran and take control. Shah crowns himself in a tradition which goes back 25 centuries. His title is King of Kings, and he becomes Emperor of his nation. The U.S. really came out on top here. They got what they wanted. They now have an American-friendly dictator in a powerful country in the Middle East, who is now welcoming American oil companies to get in on one of the largest oil reserves on Earth. Under the Shah, Iran becomes a brutal police state. He executed military officers, student leaders, anyone associated with Mossadegh. He set up a secret police force and life was brutal. So brutal that in 1979, the frustration of Iranians burst forth in mass protests that ran the Shah out of office and replaced him with an inspiring new leader who would turn Iran into an Islamic Republic built in part off a foundation of resentment for the US having meddled in their country. The Islamic Republic has held power ever since and has morphed into the oppressive theocracy we know today, though maybe not for